আসসালামু আলাইকুম কেমন আছেন আপনারা সবাই দেখো দিন পর আবার চলে এলাম নতুন একটি ভিডিও নিয়ে আমাদের বেরিজ এন্ড লাভ সেট 27 এডিশন এর যে प्रिपरेशन প্রোগ্রাম চলছিল তার ধারাবাহিকতায় আজকে আমরা আলোচনা করব যে টিস্যু এন্ড মলিকুলার ডায়াগনোসিস বেরিজ এন্ড লাভ সেট 27 এডিশন এর এই চ্যাপ্টারটা অনেক ইম্পর্টেন্ট ছিল থার্ড পেপার বা পেপার 3 তে আপনার টিস্যু এন্ড মলিকুলার ডায়াগনোসিস থেকে কোশ্চেন আসে সো আমাদের এই বিষয়টা খুব গুরুত্ব সহকারে দেখা উচিত কারণ কিছু এজ এসবিএ আসতে পারে এই টিস্যু এন্ড মলিকুলার ডায়াগনোসিস থেকে সো আসুন শুরু করা যাক আমি ডক্টর আসিফ নেওয়াজ প্রতিবারের মতোই অ্যাসিস্ট্যান্ট রেজিস্ট্রার সার্জারি এন্ড দি আর্মি মেডিকেল কলেজ বগুড়া সো শুরু করা যাক টিস্যু এন্ড মলিকুলার ডায়াগনোসিস এখানে কি নিয়ে আলোচনা করা হবে মেইনলি so why we need to see the tissue analysis why we need to see the tissue or molecular basis hmm? because to make a new diagnosis first to confirm a suspected or established clinical diagnosis to exclude additional diagnosis to assist with prognosis to stage tumors like there are some uh, lesion which may be benign or malignant okay so to help select the therapy and plan of management so if that is a benign or a harmless then that kind of tissue uh, treatment plan is different than the malignant lesion so a uh, benign and malignant is a part of quota it act important issue to help select the therapy plan management so how you can manage that patient to assess the response of treatment and audit so these are the goals or these are the system or uh, plan that we need to do to see the tissue analysis because after watching the tissue after uh, the diagnosis the tissue pattern we will we will think or make a plan for next uh, treatment procedures so ejinish gulo eta amra dekhbo je eta kono chikitsa diyar por kemon obostha age kemon chilo pore chilo like histopathology যে আমরা সাধারণত বায়োপসি পাঠাই আমরা কোনো একটি লেশন বা সার্জারি করার পরে কোনো একটি টিস্যু আমরা বায়োপসিতে পাঠাই ফর ফার্দার ইভ্যালুয়েশন সো এগুলো করার জন্য এই টিস্যু ডায়াগনোসিস আর মলিকুলার ডায়াগনোসিস নেসেসারি তো নেক্সট থিংস দি কমন টাইপ অফ স্যাম্পলিং সো টিস্যু ডায়াগনোসিস করার আগে আমরা টিস্যুদের টিস্যুর একটা স্যাম্পল নিতে হবে উই নিড টু টেক দি স্যাম্পলস সো হাউ হাউ উই ক্যান টেক দি স্যাম্পলস সো common type of tissue sample what are the two tissue samples that is histology amra jodi histological features nei histology de dekhi to formally in fixed tissue so some tissue must be prepared by the agents which are called the fixators so there are many fixators of different tissues okay so formalin is a mostly uh, known well known uh, fixators like formalin fixed tissue and biopsy we can take biopsy from mucosal surface we can make the punch biopsy the core cut biopsy that is that a portion of the tissue must be taken out from the mass or from the lesion and excision so whole uh, malignant tissue whole tumor whole mass are excised and sent for histopathology that is excision biopsy now the fresh tissue uh, that is usually frozen section so sometimes it is uh, not available in our country in all places but in the respected developed countries in the tertiary level hospital there are some mm, uh, there are some different department for frozen section because it is very quick procedures and there are some advantages and disadvantages regarding the frozen sections so we can a surgeon can know the disease instantly so that we can decide either uh, how uh, surgical procedures we will manage either it is radical or it is uh, it can be done by uh, normal excision so we can understand the uh, frozen sections by the tissue pattern quickly so that we can make the plan of surgery and the resection is the surgery that is mastic to me like gastric to me um like cholecystic to me appendix to me so these are this uh, these are this uh, treatment plan for uh, further tissue diagnosis that is resection 
now the cytology cytology is a cervical washing bruising so we can make we can take some tissues or you can take the cells that in cytology many cell signs so we can take some cells or samples of cells from the lesion by that is cervical smearing smear that is cervical smear now right uh, it uh, has a mistake i think it is a cervical smear smear okay a r also cervical smear washing bruising so we can take some tissue by from washing bruising scrap scraping we can say taking some scrapping like scalp we can take scrap a fluid and sputum for uh, for tb diagnosis for uh, malignant tissues diagnosis so these are like acidic fluid or pericardial fluid uh, pleural fluid we can make some diagnosis by uh, analyzing the pleural fluid or uh, acidic fluid that is it now the histology so we will discuss about the histology so these are the lines from bailey's and labs so these uh, so any uh, sba or uh, single based answer can be come from these statements so these statements is very important like the specimens for histology are arbitrarily classified as a biopsies and the resections a resection is usually done to remove a lesion for example, a tumor or to manage a related problem like sleep gastrectomy for obesity. So, like in case of uh, obesity treatment, sleep gastrectomy is uh, well known in our country like bariatric surgery. Now, these specimens for histology are arbitrarily classified as the biopsy. So, histological section can be uh, discussed in the as a biopsy and resection. So, after biopsy and resection, histological analysis is done. An excision biopsy is larger and serves a, or as a both a diagnostic biopsy and limited resection. Mm. So all the samples of routine histology are immediately placed in a fixative, usually formalin. So 10% formaldehyde or uh, formalin solution is used as a fixative, and which uh, to be preserved the morphology. So to survive that excised cell or to know the cellular pattern better, we need to make the tissue. Uh, fixation so that is done by the formalin 10 percent formaldehyde and the ultrasound guided ultrasound ultrasound for a ultrasound guided and computed tomography guided uh, biopsies or uh, focal and less accessible lesions have become more common so ultrasound guided and computed tomography guided biopsies of focal and less accessible lesions have been more common nowadays so we can make the lesion or take biopsies without surgery that is it is also invasive procedures by ct guided and ultrasound guided biopsy take now the cytology so here you can see some statements like cytological specimen can be obtained from many sites using a variety of approaches so we can take this cytological tissue by different approaches like urine sputum so these are these, these can be samples for cytology a conventional cervical smear that i already discussed to you that the cervical smear is obtained by sampling the cervical transformation zone with brush or broom that means cervical region uh, which is very much uh, good uh, what can we say very much a good harbor for any bacteria or fungus like candida candida oral candidiasis or or uh, or like diphtheria white pseudo epithelializations done sometimes sore throat or staphylococcal uh, overgrowth can be done in this cer uh, cervical region okay and also uh, or pharyngeal region so there are some pharyngeal reasons pharyngitis can be done by streptococcus and uh, in case of cervical reason there is a cervical candidiasis or uh, any std or sexually transmitted disease can be done can be placed in the cervical region also the malignancies or malignant cells can be found in the cervical smear so, cervical smear is done by bru bra uh, brushing or brooming okay so the bronchial aspirates washing and brushing and the gastrointestinal and the biliary brushing samples a relatively wide area and 
may therefore be useful for diagnosis of neoplasia. So that means if there is any tumor or is near any growth that is malignant or benign, okay, that can be diagnosis by bronchial aspirates or washing, brushing and biliary brushing. So that means, that means biliary reason, eh? in case of biliary reason, the brushing technique is so much popular or the best way. I uh, like the bronchial, that means, uh, that means trachea or the air airway tract, if in relation in the airway tract, that cytological approach may be brushing. Okay. And now the fine needle aspiration or FNAC may sample accessible sites as a breast, thyroid and superficial limb node. So, breast, thyroid and limb node is the location where the FNAC is very popular because FNAC is done in these three organs nowadays like breast, thyroid and superficial lymph nodes. FNAC from the deeper and less accessible uh, uh, structure like liver, pancreas, kidney, lung is usually associated with ultrasound or CT guided. So, that means if any tumor in the lungs or uh, tumor in the kidney, pancreas or liver, in that case CT guided and the ultrasound guided uh, mechanism is very popular or good procedures. Okay. So, this uh, question can be asked or can be found in the part 1 exam in FCPS. So, these examples uh, can be come as a true false or MCQ. Now, the ultrasound guided transbronchial FNC may be used for mediastinal muscles and the transmucosal for submucal gastrointestinal lesions, perivisceral lesions also. And the fluid is submitted directly to the laboratory for cytological assessment. So, these fluid are taken and sent for cytological assessment. Now, the histological processing sequence of events. So, kiki event kora hai for histology. So, what are the uh, steps of procedures? Like, if biopsy or resection specimen received, then macroscopic gross description about the lesion. So, a surgeons or the assistant surgeons are usually give description about gross macroscopical lesion. Now, the specimen sample unless small enough to submit, the specimen or sample placed in the cassette okay so this cassette there are many kind of cassettes so cassettes must be made according to their tissue pattern now the paraffin wax and block made then five micromole sections cut and then the sections put on a glass slide so i'm like a glass slider making we will make it glass slides glass slides Okay. Now, the section stained with uh, hematoxin and eozine. So, hematoxylin and eozine staining done. Then, the histopathologist examines slides and histology compared with clinical and macroscopic findings. Then, these the uh, histopathologist will examine the slide, uh, that, that slide must be examined and the histology compared with the clinical and macroscopic findings. Then, a histopathologist will describe about the macroscopical findings. Now, the further studies if necessary, if there is any uh, studies necessary like other staining or other procedures, he will uh, decide either it is, uh, it will going to be done or not. Now, the report entered into the computer system, the report authorized and signed. Okay? So, these are the processing done. So, first specimen in the cassette, paraffin wax are made, 5 micromole section cut and section put on the glass slide and the hematoxin staining and histopathology examines slides. Okay. Now, the uh, frozen section. So, why, how the process is done? Like frozen section is useful uh, when a very rapid answer is necessary for diagnosis and management. Sometimes, a very important diagnostical criteria is to decide paraoperatively. So, if we, if a surgeon need to decide the what kind of procedures he will going to made by frozen section. So, uh, it is a rapid test. So, that uh, sample uh, is sent for histopathology paraoperatively. Okay. So, it is very rapid and the representative fresh sample samples of the area interest is supplied by the surgeon and they frozen quickly to the pathology laboratory and the sections are cut and stained with several minutes. So, within few minutes diagnostic diagnosis is done. Okay. 
by because the histopathologist will uh, confirm the diagnosis by phone okay and there are a few disadvantages fresh tissue carries a higher risk of infection and fixed tissue okay amra ki korbo what are the disadvantages so fresh tissue ca carries a higher risk of infection sometimes um, uh, there is a misguidance because histopathology we see some infection or or infective bacteria along with the usual or normal diagnosis that means that uh, diagnosis become biased sometimes and fixative tissue can be present here instantly now the frozen section uh, are the advantages and disadvantages of frozen section so uh, this is the summary box of bilis and lubs so it is a quick diagnosis so what are the disadvantages labor intensive and that means very hard hard uh, working individuals must be engaged with this specific surgery like a person must be take the must take the sample and go straight within minutes to the histopathologist and must come with the diagnosis later on so which is very labor intensive and disruptive sometimes the tissues are disrupted okay risk of infection poor quality of section section ko taratari kora jay na so that section must be so much poor quality can be it could be a poor quality and the small sample required so there is a small required samples present and some tissues uh, some people difficult to process so er bitore kichu tissue thakte pare so uh, into the masses there are some different tissues uh, difficult to process now the cytological specimen okay so samples of cytology can be smeared immediately into the glass right okay and fixed through the alcohol or air dried and drained immediately or later okay that must be cleaned and sterile and the papenicula of pap staining and some other another method as a may gr uh, grand wald chimsa or the romanov skin skin so romanovsky staining or papenicula staining or pap Uh, that is also called the pap stain and other methods such as may ground out gimsa that may or the romanovsky skit staining so this staining is usually done in the cytology and cervical smear are usually stained with the pap stain only so there is a statement only so this only statement is very necessary that is what kind of cytological staining is done in case of cervical malignancy or cervical lesion so the answer is pap stain Now the resection specimens are generally stored about four to six weeks, so it are kept four to six weeks after they are taken. And the resection specimens are generally stored for, and the tissue blocks are retained for as long as space permits, thirty years. That means, it are thirty years for John to amra dekhe dite pare. So a sample or cytologic specimen can be kept or uh, stored, or um, okay, stored for thirty years. Okay, as long as thirty years. So, so gla glass slide might be retained for a shorter time, ten years. So, if we make a uh, glass slide, that slide can be done, or uh, that uh, can be good condition in ten years. So, and what are the features of malignancy? So, I'm um, after the uh, histology or cytology. What we can see to diagnose a malignant lesion. so in case of that malignant tissue slide there signs of metastasis so metastasis invasion of surrounding tissue that in local invasion of the surrounding tissue or the good tissues healthy tissues there are uh, well vascular so that is highly vascular and perineural invasion there is a perineural invasion and architectural architectural abnormality so there are some Uh, their st structures or cellular pattern is distorted or uh, different there are sometimes necrosis uh, with or without present there and the numerous mitotic figures and atypical mitotic figures so there are some atypical uh, characteristics present atypical organelles can be found there and their ratios are not like there are, there are no uh, similar ratios because sometimes they are like look like a same like cytoplasm and nuclear ratio become more or less same like 1 is to 1 or 2 is to 2 like that but normally 
that cytoplasm and nucleus ratio may be 4 is to 1 as far as I know. But in case of malignant tissue that uh, cytoplasm and nuclear ratio become same. So, there is there is some pleomorph uh, pleomorphism enlargement and hyperchromacity. So, there is hyper staining characteristics of malignant cells. So, malignant cells become hyper stained, hyper stained in nature. So, they are so much stained ok and chromatin clumping their their chromosomes are clumped with each other enlarged and pleomorphism there is a uh, there are uh, same there is, there are no difference between cytoplasm and nuclear ratio and there is some nuclear enlargement and multiplicity the multiple structures are divided same here and there. Now, the false positive diagnosis of the record there are many kind of false positive reports about malignancy like in chain sample interchange. So, if there is some uh, in mixture sampling technique in that interchange sample contamination sometimes that sampling or the glass slide or the other staining pots are contaminated with the other malignant tissues of different patient. So, that in that case contamination done and interpretative error sometimes histopathies can done, done wrong ok. Human error or interpretative error treatment induced change. So, there are some treatment induced change and ulceration can be uh, placed in that uh, mass. So, there, there is ulcer in the mass in that case may be false positive report came out. The non neoplastic and inflammatory conditions. So, now that that was the benign and malignant. Now, if there is any there are others condition like chronic infective condition or non neoplastic conditions. In that case the appendicectomies for appendicitis or cholecystectomies for gallstone disease, hysterectomies for fibroid, partial gastrectomies for obesity skin lesions such as CBC cyst, chipping from prostate glands with hyperplasia. So, prostate gland is hyperplasia high, appendicectomies uh, after appendicectomy that segment can be found can be seen for histopathology. In that case uh, that is either chronic or acute appendicitis. Now, the dysplastic and malignant lesions of the gallbladder sometimes gallbladder full gallbladder is sent for histopathology. Sarcomatous changes with it in fibroids sometimes fibroid sent and in that case sarcomatous change can be come out or adenocarcinoma in the prostate clipping chipping. So, when after done the uh, TURP operations in that case adenocarcinoma can be found out. Details are essential for meaningful interpretation of inflammatory bowel disease, biopsies, inflammatory skin biopsies, renal biopsies and medical liver biopsy. So, these biopsy also reveals then some inflammatory conditions. So, these are the lines from Bailey's and lab. So, sometimes you need to know what are the non inflammatory uh, non neoplastic inflammatory conditions. Now, the microscopic features of inflammations ok. So, an inflammation how it look like in the histopathological slide. So, they are, they are the microscopic features. Acute inflammation is characterized by neutrophils. So, obviously, there is a neutrophil present chronic inflammatory cells lymphocytes and plasma cells present other inflammatory cells uh, includes eosinophils, mast cells, histo histocytes etc. Granulomas that is granul chronic granulomatous infl inflammation or chronic granul granulomatous infection like collection of epithelioid histocytes raised by the possibility of microbacterium or microbacterial infection that is TB tuberculosis fungal infections, sarcoids, Crohn's disease or a reaction of the foreign material. So, they are like the granulomatous inflammations or infections and in fields in large number may reflect parasitic infection or allergy. So, in case of allergy or parasitic infections eosinophil count is increased. Now, the cytology compared with histology. So, where are the difference between two process like cytology and histology? Hmm? That is wider area may be sampled ok. In case of what are the advantages of cytology this wider area of sample is uh, can be taken and sampling may be less invasive. In that case cytology 
is less invasive, fast and cheap. But there are some limitations. That is, histology is very much uh, advantageous in that case. That is, cannot assess the tissue structures. That is, we cannot assess the uh, tissue structures. Okay. In case of cytology, we just know what kind of cell it is. What are the uh, characteristics of the cell? That either it is malignant or benign or in, uh, non non neoplastic inflammatory. But in case of histology, we can know the tissues. Either it is sarcomatous or epithelial origin, like carcinoma or sarcoma or benign adenomas. So that can be done, can be uh, assessed by the tissue architecture. So tissue architecture can be done by histology. Now the less amenable for further studies. So era ki hoy, uh, so cytological uh, specimen has some life limit. In that case, so less amenable. So these samples are less amenable to further studies. So, once the tissue is done by the cytology that is invalid, after uh, if I can if I wanted to make uh, another studies from that specimen sample that is not possible in case of cytology, but in case of histology that glass slide can be kept for 30 years. Okay. So, uh, further studies we can make evaluation or prognosis we, may, we can see the prognosis also by histological glass slide storage system like in case of cytology that is 10 years, but in case of th 30 years histology uh, studies is very much preferred in that case. Now the reasons for an inadequate sample. So, what are the reasons of inadequate sampling? That is reasons for an inadequate sampling is failure to sample the intended organization sample too limited non viable tissue sometimes tissue become non viable. Okay. Sample is too limited sometimes uh, we cannot reset the full part as a biopsy because it is the biopsy operations not a full operation. In that case uh, limited amount of tissue samples can be taken in that case and is in case of histology sample is too superficial sometimes superficial uh, sample uh, reveals um, inadequate diagnosis or or false positive diagnosis. Cautery artifact there are some cautery artifacts so uh, surgeons are usually use the diathermy in that case cautery artifact can be come through the specimen and crush artifact in this avulsion or distortion of the tissues normal tissues can be uh, come out with crush artifact okay artifact that means false things but by came with crushing so additionally what are the other stains we can done for uh, tissue or molecular diagnosis like special stains there are some special stains immuno histochemistry this is also a procedures electron microscopy molecular pathology in situ hybridization that is fish process in situ hybridizations including fluorescence in situ that means fish fluorescence we can use fluorescence uh, hybridization for uh, molecular diagnosis pcr based technique which is very popular like like uh, we are passing a covid pandemic so it is one of the important tools for diagnosis uh, DNA, rna or dna viruses by amplifications of the viral specimen and the some common special stains there are other staining that is pas glycogen uh, and fungi can be taken uh, dpas that is mucin pearl prussian uh, blue yes pearl prussian blue that is iron deficiency anemia uh, no in case of hemochromatosis okay in case of thalassemia there is iron overload or hemochromatosis which is uh, can be uh, diagnosed by the pearls present blue staining reticulin like retic fiber fibrosis if there is any fibrosis reticulin staining can be done then van gesen collagen so collagen van gesen is done and congoid staining in case of amyloidosis or amyloid staining congoid is very popular gel nails gel nails staining which is, which is uh, done for microbacterium tuberculosis or tb okay so this is uh, my uh, mcq the from these boxes mcq are usually come so pass d pass pearls and blue van gesen congo red and zinnison staining 
now the immunohistochemistry okay so immunohistochemistry which is revealed in 1970 had a major impact on histopathological diagnosis there are some revolutionary revolutionary changes in histopathological diagnosis the technique defect as a specific antigen using antibody so there are some antigen antibody reactions of um, this allows the presence and tissue distributions and cellular localizations of an antigen to be determined and the immunohistochemistry can be applied to fixed and frozen sections and to cytological preparations immunohistochemistry has multiple applications in tumor pathology including eclidations of site of origin and determination of cell type and their directions of dif differentiations and immunohistochemistry may also help to confirm the neoplasia determine the selection of treatment define prognostic predictions and screen for known underlying genetic changes and the immunohistochemical stainings are used to detect cell type cytokines uh, cytokeratins are expressed by epithelial cells cytokeratin positivity favors carcinoma so there are some other positive favors okay that means neoplasia di uh, diagnosis is very easy nowadays after the 1970s where immunohistochemistry process is revealed because uh, by this process we can make the mass either it is benign or malignant some histochemical stains for tumors like there is some histochemical like cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus uh, herpes simplex type a that is kaposi sarcoma hepatitis b virus helicobacter pylori some of these organs can be seen uh, hematoxylin and eosin staining and immunohistochemistry or other techniques for other their direct detections immunohistochemistry can also be used to study immunoglobulins and com complements expressions lymphomas or renal biopsies to assess the abnormal accumulations of various proteins such as alpha 1 antitrypsin characters amyloid so alpha 1 antitrypsin is uh, can be found in amyloid to skin mismatch uh, gene repair and lymphomas and renal biopsies is also done okay so these are the uh, uh, bacteria or viruses that is C CMV, cytomegalovirus, Epstein Barr virus, herpes simplex, hepatitis B, hepatitis B, bacteria. So these are the orco oncogenic virus and bacteria that can be diagnosed by the hematoxylin and eosine staining. The A means hepatox uh, hematoxylin and E means eosine slides. Indications of molecular pathology. So where we are done the molecular pathology testings. Okay, why? Where? Where we will do this? Diagnosis and classification of tumors. So, if there is any um, any treatment of co of in tumor or masses, in that case histopathology will histopathology will come out. Confirmation of neoplasia. Okay, either is clonality. So, clonality is a useful characteristic of malignant lesion. Malignant lesion that means synchronous lesion can be found in other sites, which is called metastasis. So, clonality is a characteristic of malignant tissue. Staging, that is what kind of uh, differentiation occurs, either it is poorly differentiated or um, high, poorly, highly differentiated, poorly or well differentiated, that is a grading and the staging that is TNM, tumor from where uh, up to which extent a uh, tumor is metastasis like uh, it is uh, limb node involvement or distal organ uh, involvement and the uh, limb nodes so surrounding limb nodes or draining limb nodes are affected so these extension of uh, of diseases can be assessed by staging and prognosis after chemo radiation or chemotherapy radiotherapy the extension of the disease is heated and becomes uh, cured sometimes so uh, these prognosis is uh, done by histopathology selection of therapy so which therapy we will need to take either it is radiotherapy and surgery or the surgery only or the radiotherapy only or adjuvant chemotherapy surgery then the chemotherapy and radiotherapy so these kind of uh, sur surgical plans or treatment plans can be 
um, can be established by histopathological diagnosis. Now the clinical settings. So, amra ekhane kichu clinical setting dekbo molecular clinical settings. That is clonal immunoglobulin is a habit chain. Gene uh, rearrangement of B cell proliferation, clonal T cell receptor gene assessment, T cell proliferation, favored lymphoma. Sometimes some T cell proliferation and uh, favors the lymphoma. Okay. Clonal disease is uh, typically detected using PCR based method. So, how we can uh, we can assess it? either there is any clonality that is which is done by PCR based methods. And the diagnosis of many types of soft tissue tumor or sarcoma is assessed by the molecular testing. Samples include the Young sarcoma, alveolar abdomyosarcoma, leomyosarcoma, characteristics of cytogenic changes are usually detected by fish that means fluorescence in situ hybridizations. So, these are the uh, like Ewing sarcoma, alveolar abdomen sarcoma, uh, sarcoma. So, these are the co connective tissue origin malignation. So, they that can be assessed by fish or fluorescence in situ hybridizations. And clonality, clonality is detected by the PCR based methods. And the GIST that means gastrointestinal stromal tumor having a KIT genes, mutations or PID. The here is some uh, defect that is. KIT means like these kind of things. Okay. So, KIT genes can be found in the GIST and the FDG, FRA gene mutations more often form identifications of known mutations here to confirm the diagnosis of GIST. So, this gene mutation is so much common here. CRC that is um, colorectal carcinoma. In case of colorectal carcinoma, an endometrial carcinoma can harbor germline or sporadic abnormalism, mismatch repair, MMR. So, MMR gene. So, mismatch repair gene. MMR means mismatch repair. So, there are some mismatch repairing of clonal uh, colorectal carcinoma. So, like MLH1, ML, ML, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2. So, these four genes of MMR present in the colorectal carcinoma, like Lynch syndrome. Characterized by general MMR gene defect. So, it is specifically so Lynch syndrome is so much common in MMR gene defect. Predisposes to colorectal carcinoma and other tumors may occur in the relatively young ages. So, colorectal carcinoma can be found in adult and young age, but in case of young age, there is some MMR gene defect by the Lynch syndrome. Immunohistochemistry is common screening method of MMR mutation. So, so these genes can be diagnosed by immunohistochemistry. G is diagnosed by uh, by uh, diagnosis of key KIT genes and these malignant lesions done by fish and clonality by PCR. So, this is very important slide okay, for, for FCPS exam. Thank you very much for uh, today's presentation. I think I managed all the important content of tissue and molecular diagnosis of Paris and Lapkin 27th edition. Kya mol laglo aapna dheer video ira avushe jana ben aar make a comment below and we can make a diagnosis, we can make discussions in the comment sections. If you like my channels, please subscribe uh, virtual medical blog in the Facebook group and also uh, my medical and surgical blog. Thank you very much to stay with me. And thank you very much for patience hearing. Thank you. Peace.